Hello, my name is Joe Wright and I'm the guy responsible for the UKI Country Kit for the 2019 and 2020 releases of Civil 3D. This is the first of eight UKIE mini tip videos. Each are around six to seven minutes long and they are aimed at all levels of Civil 3D user. So if you're a beginner or even an expert, you should get something out of all these videos. In this outing, I'm going to show you how we can lock points in feature lines. This is particularly useful if you need a new design to respect some existing levels. Locking points means that changing your design will ensure you always tie in to existing features. But in this video, we're going to look at a finished floor level of a building plot and ensure that the driveway to the plot is always tied in to the pavement edge. Here is a chunk of land we are going to be working with. As you can see I have already drawn a polyline that represents the plot. This is currently flat at a level of zero, as you can see from the property sheet. Whilst polylines are good, feature lines are a lot better, so I'm going to convert this polyline to a feature line. As you can see, it's always worth giving your Civil 3D object a decent name. That's good practice and it will help out when your model gets busy. Now, here I'm going to assign a style that's included in the UKIE template called Second Priority. You'll see why later and it will help you understand the mechanics of the process I'm showcasing. At this stage, I want to move the object up to the ground level. I'm unticking intermediate grade breakpoints as I only want the nodes of the polyline defining the feature line levels. Once you've created a feature line, it's always worth creating a quick profile. This will give you dynamic feedback as your design evolves. There are two things at play here. One is the existing ground, which is worth starting appropriately. The other is the 3D entity, that's the feature line, which I always style in a heavy line white style. A new one was introduced in the 2019 template, so I'm going to use that because I can. Uh, then voila, we have a profile. Uh, I'm just going to split the screen horizontally so you can see things better. And here you can just about make out the existing ground. When I select the feature line, the ribbon bar lights up like a Christmas tree showing you all the tools you have to play with. We're just going to use the level editor, or the elevation editor if you're using the American English version. And here you can see the nodes of the feature line are presented for editing in a nice convenient table. This allows me to work on my design, and I'm simply going to flatten the finished floor area. I get instant feedback in the profile, and you can now see exactly what the profile represents. It's worth noting at this point that I drew the original geometry this way round and the parts that tie into the pavement edge are here and here. Now these need to remain fixed as, as my design changes. To change the vertical design I'm going to move the whole feature line up in intervals of 0.75 a metre. Whoops, that breaks the tie-in. Ah. The same happens when I move it down. Oh, whilst I could theoretically only manipulate certain points, it would be very handy to lock the points at the pavement edge. That way any changes I make don't affect the tie-in. Actually doing this is simple. Just draw a new feature line over the points you wish to lock. Here I'm assigning the style first priority because I want this to be the controlling feature line. Yeah, and I'm going to snap it to the levels that I want to be locked. Now when I go back to the original feature line and change the levels, you can see that the geometry is now locked into the tying positions. Notice that the locked points are shown as greyed out triangles in the level editor just so you know which points are no longer editable. This is an example of feature line priority, and I've used the UKIE styles first priority and second priority to control which feature line is in control. 
And if you don't do this by styles, then the most recently drawn feature line will win. But I think that using feature line priority styles gives you a lot more control. To outline a practical example of how this can produce a finished model, I'm going to use grading tools to grade this into the existing ground. Here you can see the result inside Object Viewer. Notice the bottom of the ramp is not graded because it ties in. <laughs> now, as long as I find the original feature line and I'm going to knock the newly created surface to the back so it's easily selectable, I can then use all the tools for editing the feature line to change my levels. Let's change that height increment to half a meter and move the finished floor level up a notch or two. Notice the grading will respect these changes dynamically. And as you would expect, the finished floor level respects the higher priority feature line and the tie-in remains as the grading is recalculated, producing a new model which hits our criteria. I hope this has explained the principles of feature line priority and that you've enjoyed watching this video. Please revisit over the coming months as I will be adding more UKIE mini tips. My name is Joe Wright. Thank you for watching.